SEC Media Days. It is next week, right? This time next week, there will be teams at the podium, coaches and players alike. Tennessee will take to the podium on Thursday, and it was announced yesterday the three players who will be representing the University of Tennessee. No surprise, but some you know, pr pretty good representation there. You got quarterback Joe Milton, tight end Jacob Warren, and defensive lineman Amari Thomas. Grant, these three representatives, any surprises? Anybody that you thought might be there in place of one of these three? No surprises for me. My only real expectation, I, I didn't really try to sit down and, and guess who these three were going to be, but it felt like it was going to be Joe Milton and whoever else, two other guys, because I think Joe Milton's a guy that he said all the right things, he's done all the right things, he he handled the everything the last couple of years with him and Hooker the right way, he never said anything publicly uh, that would bring bad light on the pro. I mean, it felt like every time the camera's on, he's got a big smile on his face and he's saying the right thing, and, and that's what you want out of your redshirt senior quarterback. He's been around, he's seen everything, he's done everything. Uh, it makes sense for him to to go to Nashville this time, not Hoover, not not Atlanta, uh, to Nashville. Thank God. <laughs> Sorry, um, had to get that in there. <laughs> there were, there were some players that could have certainly went. I mean, Aaron Beasley's a guy that could have went. Cooper Mays is the guy that could have went. I mean, there's plenty of representatives up there. But Brent, I think the the purpose of this is. You know, you know who your quarterback is, so Joe Bilton goes. There's a lot of teams around the SEC that didn't send a quarterback because they're a little unsure right now. But you want to send players who will speak highly of your program and not give anybody else bulletin board material, essentially. And these three players, you know, Jacob Warren and Amore Thomas, aren't going to do that. They speak to us regularly throughout the season. There's kind of a strategy behind it, and so that's why I think these three make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, and, and look, I, I mean, I hope that we're past and coaches are moving past this, this idea that you got to shield or protect some player from the media that the that the 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 young quarterback the sophomore quarterback is not ready to handle that spotlight. I mean, these guys are on social media. They're interacting with fans. They're getting dog by. I mean, like they know everything that's out there. There's a lot more savvy to this. So take your best football players. Take your take your football players that generate the most publicity for you and the players that the media wants to speak with, right? Because, I mean, th th does anybody in the media at SEC Media Days, of course, it's the last day, last group. There, I mean, it's getaway day, right, Grant? There won't be, <laughs> The world won't be there. But nope. is there anybody there who's going to do a story on Tennessee who doesn't want to talk to Joe Milton? Nope. Nobody, right? Okay? So you, you, you're going to put Joe Milton in there. I mean, kudos, even though, I mean, like, put your best player out there. Don't, let's Coaches don't, like, not bring – or not hide or, or, or something. Now, if you, if you don't know who your quarterback's going to be, I mean, if Alabama's not bringing a quarterback, I get that. But but bring your most talked about Ballyhooed players, and I, I think hopefully we've gotten to that. Because there's a couple years where some SEC coaches left everybody at the house, right? And it was like, you're bringing who? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I, I think the commissioner has said, eh, let's do a little better. And I think finally some schools are coming around to the idea of, you know what? NIL, they're doing their own stuff anyway. They can do anything they want to do out, out there. So why not bring those guys and, and put them in front of the media and let them represent your program? Matt, when you look at these three players, obviously, you know, Joe Milton, he's he's the leader of this football team. He carries himself that way, and, you know, that, that that's a big reason why he's there. But, you know, Jacob Warren's a guy that – we've had this conversation a little bit the last couple of weeks when we think about who's going to represent Tennessee. Jacob Warren never really came to mind for me. Um because he's so soft-spoken and unassuming. However, I mean, he's the leader of this football team. He's coming back, taking advantage of the COVID year of eligibility, playing a key position of this football team. I think he makes a whole lot of sense, and uh, along with Amari Thomas, kind of kind of doing the same way on the defensive line. Yeah, I think, I think both of those guys make a lot of sense, along with Joe Milton. I mean, when you look at Jacob Warren, yeah, he's not one. I mean, I think Cooper Mays was the one that probably came to mind for me first. Um, but Jacob Warren's like having another coach out there on the field for Tennessee. Yeah. I mean, he's been around the program. He, he's, he's, you know, so valuable. Um, you know, he's, he's such a high IQ guy. He just very well spoken. He, he makes a ton of sense and, and good for him, you know, and, and getting the opportunity to go do this, you know, this time around as, as he, you know, embarks on his final season here at Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, they, they, the guys, I mean, he's been through everything at Tennessee. <laughs> he's, he feels like he's been at Tennessee a decade, um, yep. you know, that, that, he's, that he's played there. And obviously he's an important piece of the puzzle. I, I think offensively, you know, Jacob makes sense. I, I think Brew McCoy would have made sense mm -hmm. as well. 
uh, Cooper Mays. I mean, they had plenty of options there uh, to, to talk about, you know, this team. But, again, when, when they get to those breakout tables, everybody's going to flock to the Joe Milton table um, to, to see what he has to say and, and to have a conversation with him about being the leader of this offense and everything else. So um, we'll see what, what Joe has to say. I mean, he's already dropped the – what is it? Joe doesn't lose in Florida or something, yeah. something along those lines. He'll be I, asked about that. I, I don't, I don't think that's exactly how he meant it, but I'm sure it's going to be in every locker in the Florida locker room. Uh, when, 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 when their, their practice for Tennessee comes about that, that week for sure. Hubs, Jacob Horn hadn't been here a decade, but if you've been here since before COVID, it just feels like you've been here. a decade. <laughs> yeah, All right. If, if y'all haven't looked at the list, how many quarterbacks do you think are going to be in Nashville? I have not looked at the list. All right. um, I know, I know that um, our boy, our, our Rogers, Mississippi State is going to be there. Will Rogers, correct? Will Rogers is going to be there. LSU is bringing a quarterback, right? Jaden Daniels, that's correct. That's right. three total, right. including Joe. KJ Jefferson's going to come from Arkansas, right? KJ Jefferson's there from Arkansas. I would that's imagine Spencer total. Rattler is going to be there for South Carolina. Didn't Matt just say Spencer Rattler? I don't know. No. Now, who did you just say? I haven't AJ, said anybody. I, I'm just counting. Will Rogers, Spencer Rattler, Joe Milton. That's four. Anybody else? Anybody Who's else? the uh, – is Leary from Kentucky No, coming? he's new. He wouldn't go. I don't know, Eric. He's like a six-year transfer, man. It's all about the quarterback position at Kentucky. It's an I upgrade can... from what they had. There's no <laughs> doubt Rob's not here to chime in on that. But I just I feel can... like since he's new, I mean, he's, I mean, he's not on the list, is he? You can straight up ask yeah, him right now not. if he if he drinks you know mayonnaise in his coffee. That's a storyline <laughs> in and of itself. Yeah, I would. I'm a little. I'm a little surprised Kentucky's not bringing Leary. To, to be honest with you, uh, when you look at where they are, um, the youth that Kentucky, they had. Kentucky, Eli really Cox, really? Octavius Oxendine, yeah. JJ Weaver. That's yeah. it. Four they four quarterbacks. Octavius. That's it. That's no. the that's list. It? That's, that's the it. Only- that's the list. There, I, I'm, I'm going down it right now. There's a ton of offensive linemen, a ton of defensive linemen. There's so all of that players. diatribe where I said coaches have figured this out is no is no longer true, right? <laughs> well, it might be true. It might just be a, a referent. Uh, you know, this might just be kind of condemning SEC quarterbacks in 2020. <laughs> well, I mean, you think about it. O- Ole Miss doesn't know who their guy's going to be. Alabama doesn't know who their guy's going to be. Auburn doesn't know who their guy's going to be. Kirby was not bringing. Not bringing Carson back, right? He was he, bringing you know. Brock Bowers, Kamari Lasseter, and Cedric Van Praan. He's yeah. not bringing Tate Rattledge to talk about Neyland Stadium. He's <laughs> not bringing Tate Rattledge. You know, he's not bringing he's not bringing anybody that's recently got a speeding ticket, I guess, as well. Oh my um, <laughs> should have said that, right? The that shot from Corey <laughs> from the top Sorry. row. Oh, Robert. Robert. Probably shouldn't have went. Probably shouldn't have went there. Sorry. Um, but Vanderbilt doesn't – I mean, there's not a lot of proven quarterbacks, right? I mean, that, yeah. that's the other thing. I mean, Jaden Daniels – I mean, if you're listing your top – Nope. Just not a whole lot of quarterbacks. Let me continue on for Hubbard right there. Not a whole lot of quarterbacks in the SEC because think about Sorry. it. You're replacing a really good quarterback class that, that obviously just left. I mean, you got Stetson Bennett who just coming off a national championship. Hendon Hooker's returning. <laughs> Anthony Richardson was getting a whole lot of hype. And, of course, Will Levis was getting a whole lot of hype. Plus, Spencer Rattler was a name. You also had Will Rogers, who's been there for a decade. I mean, there were so many quarterbacks in this conversation last year. And, Brent, you're you're, you're having to replace a ton. You know, K.J. Jefferson as well. You're having to replace a ton conference-wide. So, maybe that's why there's not that many. Well, and so my question is this. Who's your top three quarterbacks in the league in the preseason? Great question. Don't know. KJ Jefferson's up there. Jaden Daniels is up there, and depending on who you ask, probably Will Rogers or. See, I don't, I don't love uh, KJ Jefferson. I'm just, I, I have a hard time with that one. I mean, I thought you know he lost those receivers from two years ago. I thought he was just, I thought he was average last year at, at, at Arkansas. Now he didn't have a whole lot of help, I guess, as part of it. But I don't, I don't know that I'm buying the KJ Jefferson. Now Jaden Daniels, he figured it out after Tennessee left town. Yeah. Um, you know, he wasn't very good when Tennessee was there, but he, he started to figure it out, obviously, down the stretch. I, I don't know. I mean, who the preseason top three quarterbacks are going to be versus who the top three quarterbacks are, say, the second week of October will be a very different – I think could potentially be a very different list than, than what you see in the preseason. Shout out, shout out South Carolina. They're they're bringing a quarterback and they're bringing a punter too. So, Kai, oh, Kai we got Kroger. a picture coming. 
We've nice. got a we got a punter, and they got another guy named Tonka Hemingway, all all name team right there. So you got a punter, you got a quarterback, and you got a dude named Tonka Hemingway to go along with Octavius Oxendine from Kentucky. Oh, yeah, that's true too. Who Tennessee fans are very familiar with. Yeah, there's a lot of good names 